Hey folks, today we've got a rather interesting and novel take on the deck builder genre. Or should I say dice builder genre? Either way, I want to start talking about it, so this is the good, the bad, and the bland of Astria Six-Sided Oracles. Astria is developed by the folks over at Little Leo Games, and there's a lot going on with it. In terms of gameplay flow, the game sees you going through three acts, choosing your paths to decide which resources you want to pick up on the way to each of the act's bosses, while dealing with some combat encounters along the way and slowly building up your dice decks to help you through all of it. Which brings us to the fact that all of your cards and the enemy actions are actually dice that have six potential outcomes getting rolled whenever they are drawn to figure out what action you'll be able to perform with it on that turn. The dice themselves have a few separate categories that they fall under. There's the starting die, which are the dice your character starts the run with, safe die, which tend to have every dice face be a small beneficial effect, balance die, which are slightly stronger but have some negative options on them, risky die, which tend to have very powerful effects but also quite a few very powerful negative effects on them, and epic die, which tend to grant the powerful effects of Risky Die with none of the negative effects. As could be expected, each character has their own slew of character-specific mechanics and actions that can appear on dice, different sized health pools, as well as unique actions called Virtues that they can perform as they take damage. The term damage is kind of a strange beast in Astria, as there's really two different damage types, Purification and Corruption. Purification is what damages the corrupted enemies but can also serve to heal you and your buddies, while corruption heals enemies and damages you and your buddies. With the addition that once an enemy takes a certain amount of corruption, they also perform a special action that varies from enemy to enemy. The virtues that characters can use bring an entire other level of strategy to the mix, as it means taking damage can sometimes be a huge benefit, particularly since you can use the virtues multiple times a turn if you can bring the health back up and down again adding a whole nother layer of risk and reward to the decision-making process. The health system is another rather unique aspect, as in addition to having their corruption bar, each character also has a certain number of hearts. Whenever the corruption meter fills, the character loses a heart, resets to full purification, and continues on, only ending a run once they've run out of hearts. Astria also does some interesting things with some of its buffs. You have your Star Blessings, which provide a small benefit or mildly changes how you might interact with certain systems. Then the Black Hole Blessings, which are stronger and sometimes drastically change build possibilities, but always come with some form of a downside. Astria also smartly gives quite a few actions on dice that allow the player to either re-roll dice, select a specific side of a die, convert corruption into purification, or just discard a die to either draw or deal purification. So you can get plenty of ways to deal with bad rolls to minimize your risk. The player can also get allies called sentinels as they go through the runs, with a sentinel being a guaranteed reward after each boss fight. These sentinels vary, but between them can do most of the basic actions available in the game, like the aforementioned re-rolling or side selection, in addition to character-specific sentinels that can utilize that character's specific mechanics to help push a build even further. The sentinels can also level up at certain shops littered throughout the run using star shards you get as a reward from battles and events, and every time you go to select a sentinel, you have the option of seeing what that sentinel's dice will do and how that sentinel will change as it levels, to allow you to better decide which one is right for you. The other option for your star shards involve a couple other shops, one of which allows you to replace one side of a die with a purchased action, destroy a dice in your deck, or duplicate another die in your deck, and another shop which carries epic dice and star blessings at the cost of a rather large amount of star shards. There are also shrines where a player can either gain some star shards, sacrifice one of their hearts to get a star blessing, or, at certain shrines, have the option to recover a lost heart. Progression is pretty straightforward. Win or lose, each run will reward the player with experience for the character that they were playing, and as they level, they will unlock new dice actions, new buffs, and even new characters. I could probably go on for quite some time on how the specific keywords work, but there's way too many and we'd be here all day. So let's go on to what positive aspects really stood out to me.
the sheer amount of action variety and therefore build variety is absolutely wild and makes it so every run can potentially lead to new and interesting interactions for a good long while. There's also a very interesting dice action called forging, which allows you to rewrite a die's face to the forged action for the rest of the run, meaning you can slowly make every negative option in your dice pool into a positive action and eliminate basically all risks so long as the rest of your deck is capable enough to stall long enough to do so. The art, sounds, and style are also pretty fantastic and fit the tone really well. I really like how every single character feels entirely unique to each other and has a multitude of different options built into their kits that, between all of them and their different builds, can cover a wide variety of deck archetypes. Like being a summoner? Hey! There's a dude who will always have two sentinels that you can manipulate. Like just pure RNG stacking? Here's someone who has and benefits from a multitude of random hits and effects. Are you an invoker player and feel all this is too simple? Not to worry, because this one has orbs that have active effects and you can rotate through, and that also has specific die actions that require specific orbs to be active, or you'll suffer a severely negative effect. One feature that also stood out is a minor thing, but if you should fail in a run, you can just immediately hit retry after your experience gains to go back in as the same character. Useful for when you want to just jump back in and see what nonsense buff stacking you'll get this time as Sothis. Now while I really do enjoy this game, it's not perfect. So let's move on to the parts that I feel might not be for everyone. This is another instance for me where bad might not be quite the right word, as nothing in this game particularly stood out as bad to me, but there are definitely parts that I can see people not particularly meshing with, as while I enjoy the random decision making that comes from the dice rolling, I could see it being just a little bit too much RNG for some. Particularly if you feel games like Slay the Spire or Monster Train feel a bit unfair or random in their ability to let you complete a run. As even with the options presented to minimize risk and randomness, there is still going to be a bit more that's somewhat out of your control sometimes than your typical deck builder. That's basically it for the bad, so let's hop over to the points that don't really fit elsewhere. There's not a whole lot to say in this section, honestly. While it wasn't a problem for me personally, one thing that might be a sore point for some people is the bit of a learning curve as you try to get used to the myriad meanings of the icons and die faces and the slight visual confusion of which effect it is so you can tell what they do at a glance rather than having to constantly stop and scroll over them, as there can be a few similar looking icons. And that's really about it for this section too, so let's head to the conclusion. Astria is an absolute delight of a deck builder, uh, dice builder, D whatever, and provides an absolute ton of variety and ability to cover myriad playstyles, and you should absolutely play it if you like the genre. I would honestly say that it's pretty close or on par to the level of Slay the Spire and Monster Train in terms of replayability and variety, and would make a great addition to your library. But, if for some reason you're uncertain if you could stand the added RNG that dice bring, or are otherwise on the fence, it does have a demo and you should at least give that a try. Because this game was an absolute joy to play through as a fan of the genre and felt like a breath of fresh air. Alright, that's all for today, folks. Feel free to let me know your thoughts on the game in the comments below, and until next time, take care.